More than a year ago, I accepted an invitation to give theological lectures in Pittsburgh Theological Seminary and Trinity School of Ministry, Ambridge, that really is somewhere in the States called Ambridge. In Pennsylvania, with, uh, with the lectures being nothing to do with fracking or the environment, I then realized I'd be in the States at the same time as Kevin Hollingway, Eric P. I had limited free time, I did not have time to travel, so I asked to meet people who would give me first-hand information on the impact of fracking in their communities. And I made absolutely no apology for making that my priority. I was given evidence from three different counties. Here's Pennsylvania. Here's the share. Imposed upon it is Denmark, because these slides were originally prepared for someone else and given to me, and it was a group that came from Denmark to see what the effects, uh, effects would be. So Pennsylvania is 13 times the size of North Yorkshire, but North Yorkshire has a denser population than Pennsylvania. Is Pennsylvania like North Yorkshire? Well, yes, inevitably it's huge and it's got some beautiful rural landscapes. But the differences are its size, the sheer number of trees, and the hilly and mountainous terrain. The tree cover and the hills and the mountain ranges are such that fracking locations are far less easily seen in daylight than they would be in North Yorkshire. But with lights and burning flares, they're easily seen at night time as they would be here. So let me take you through some years. Pennsylvania 2006, the little yellow dots are fracking ones. 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. Now, do you see why we use the word industrialization? And worse still, the natural gas industry's own estimate is that they've only got 10% of the gas so far. So if you now think of the amount of the north of England that is now out for exploration, or the government wishes to put out for exploration, and you think from the one map to the other, But if we're going to understand the issues for Rydale, let's focus on one county in Pennsylvania and one county town, as things were well, in the middle of last year. Bradford County is about twice the size of Rydale, and its county town is called Duane. Population is around 3,000, Morton Town is around 5,000. Now, I need to point out to you the a high school. The yellow line is one kilometre. So let's back up a little. <coughs> Keep an eye on that yellow line, it's a kilometre. Back a bit more. Back a bit more. <coughs> it's about twice the size of Rider. Rydell's 575 square miles, Bradford County's 1,160. Bradford County at the moment has 1,097 fracking wells. It has had 765 environmental violations as agreed by the Department of Environmental Protection. And as we've heard in their testimony to the Select Committee on Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, Third NEC said 19 sites with between 10 and 50 wells per site, maximum 950. I mean, they wouldn't do it that much, I think, but if so, it's more dense than Bradford County. So what's happened to Tawanda? A report founded by the Pulitzer Center says, while the economic benefits for companies, large leaseholders, and some local businesses have been significant, so the firms have made some money, some of the bigger landowners have made some money, but it's not the same as here, because in the States, you own the gas under your soil. Uh, over here, the government owns the gas under your soil. So there's not the money, anywhere near as much money to make. Uh, 
And some local businesses have, have done well. But lots more people come in to drill wells and things like that. They've got to eat somewhere, they've got to sleep somewhere. The gas rust threatens, though, to undermine the farming and dairy operations of the area. A rural area has been industrialized, while creating a host of environmental and social problems. To wander the county's seat, the county town has metamorphosized into a real boom town, says the report, with industry trucks and large pickups jamming the single main street. Crime has gone up by 40%, and rents and food prices have skyrocketed. Surprise, surprise, there are some new businesses. New restaurants and hotels have sprung up along the River Valley to serve the rig and pipeline workers, many of whom come from Texas, Oklahoma, and Mississippi, stay to do the job and then move on. Uh, blowouts, toxic spills, water contamination, and gas migration have accompanied the development. Uh, so there are some jobs, but their jobs are the price. Uh, Stephen Claycorn, an organic farmer, says jobs are well and good, but you don't want to be working on a job that's going to destroy the place where you want to live or where you want your grandchildren to live. Dairy farmers are selling their herds. Dairy farming, as here, was tough there, and a little bit of money for a well and get out. Uh, but the report says risking a sustainable industry like farming for an unsustainable one like fossil fuel extraction may prove too expensive in the end. Someone said to me, we've industrialised our own bread basket. And I thought of Malton, Yorkshire's capital for food. And there is the health impact. The one particular report mentioned 27% increase in hospital admissions for cardiovascular diseases like asthma or stroke. They studied three counties. They studied a county with no gas and therefore no wells and set it against Bradford County and one other. Uh, uh, the, they looked at 198,000 records. They show a 27% increase in hospitalization. And what worried them was that appeared in five years. It normally takes several decades for those sort of changes to come through. And it seems directly related to how many wells there are and how near to wells you are. I hadn't heard of compressors and all sorts of other things until I got briefed in Pennsylvania. And then there's the proximity to schools. That's the view uh, from the school. Uh, our MP met a group called the Mars Parent Group. They're not from outer space, there really is a town called Mars. Another one called Moon. Uh, who, having heard that at the end of his trip he was reassured, said this, based on the data research and personal stories that Mr. Hollingray received, we would have hoped to hear that he was more skeptical or cautious about fracking in communities. And their spokesman said, Residents in Pennsylvania were and still are the sacrificial lambs of shale development. Here money trumps their health and safety. No one is taking responsibility for the mess this industry continues to make. And I'm now in touch with that group. So this is why I believe fracking is a threat to Ryder. We're in danger of undermining the long-term prosperity of this area. It's tourism, it's food, it's agriculture, all for dubious short-term energy gains. And it is absolutely crazy to do so at this time. After the Tour de France and the Tour de Yorkshire have driven the attention of the world to this beautiful place. It's not just the national park and the areas of outstanding beauty. You saw the beauty of the film. It includes all that you can see from them and around them and we want to control what we're doing under them, let alone Morton's reputation for food and the well-being of local communities. So I am clear that fracking industrializes and it's a threat to this community.